kindness and 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 its sort of public expression civility it kind of runs through the scripture like a theme as it does in our daily lives you know the bible is this enormous uh composite of of literature and stories and history and you can't find a section that says you know tell me what the bible says about kindness you find it interwoven between and among human beings in their interactions with one another and in their understanding of god and so um so you see it and it's, it's it can come out like a like a star in a dark sky or a, a gentle wave of wind or or water like for example um in the stories of Genesis the famous story of Joseph and his brothers you know Joseph had every reason to treat the brothers who had beaten him and left him for dead with disdain or with cruelty when the power dynamic had shifted and yet instead he showed forgiveness and mercy um, or you can think of Ruth, the woman who had every reason to leave her mother-in-law behind and yet chose to follow her and to be a daughter-in-law of kindness and found her identity and her reward among the people of Israel. And, and the Psalms, which are these long lamenting and beautiful prayers and wonderings about where God is in times of hardship. Is God a punishing God? Is God a wrathful God? And um, and always coming back to this theme of God being slow to anger and of great kindness and encouraging people to be the same. I was thinking about the prophetic writings and, and the, uh, the temptation always to interpret the signs of the times through a lens of anger and wrath um, and with reason to be angry and perhaps even wrathful, but this same echoing of proclamation that um, God does not judge us with harshness, but with kindness, and that we are to return to this God of kindness, abounding in steadfast love. <laughs> and then the passage that is at the heart of our conversation um, from the prophet Micah, you know, very clearly, succinctly saying that what the Lord requires of us is that we love justice and do kindness and walk humbly. That's all in the Hebrew text. And then when we move into the Christian scriptures, we have Jesus, who is the embodiment of mercy and kindness uh, in the way he treats people, the way he engages them, uh, the stories that he teaches, um, stories that stand out in our memory for their kindness, for their compassion, notably the story of the prodigal son or the good Samaritan. Um, his teachings, uh, not only to love those who are who love us back, but to love our enemies. Um, these are like the highest of aspirations brought to us by the one who embodied and <clears throat> and loves and forgives and offers that kindness back to us. Um, the writings of Paul, and and maybe that's where the rubber hits the mo the road most um, most acutely because he's writing to Christian communities, people who are trying. A, to get along with each other, and also to be an example and a witness to other people. And so he's um, constantly exhorting and encouraging people to put on love, to be kind, to understand the importance of gentleness and patience and forgiveness, and and even not to take revenge when, when we have been wronged. Always strive to do what is good. Um, so that's, as you can see, it's a it's it's a recurring theme that just comes back to us time and time again, uh, reminding us of a God of mercy and kindness and the call and the exhortation to live as those people that offer kindness and mercy to the world, uh, revealed to us in Jesus and indeed empowered by his spirit uh, to be that kind of people in the world. It's It's an expression of love. It's a manifestation of love. Uh, that is subtle. In in most of its um, interactions, it isn't a big deal. It's just how we show up in the world in a way that um, makes um, makes every exchange that we have one of of uh, of goodwill. You know, it, it it's uh, as as Joan Chittister says, the the human ecology is safe with people who live in kindness. Like you can you can trust people who are going to um, you can trust that the world is a better place when uh, your most basic exchanges with people are ones that lift your spirit a little bit. 
Um, and then you translate that into the more heated engagements, the, the more difficult conversations, the real uh, struggles and debates that we have with one another, both in our relational lives personally and politically. And when we can self-regulate to the point where we aren't reacting with our um, instinctual emotion, but with a uh, a mind to how we will be, how our words and our actions will affect those those who hear them and who see us, uh, that you, that's the suit that we're wearing um, that allows that love to come forth. <music>